Hello friends, welcome to this 24th lecture on calculus of variations. In this lecture, we are going to derive the formula for general variation of the functional of this form, right? In the last video, we have derived the formula for general variation of the functional of this form. What do we mean by general variation? General variation means there are no constraints on the endpoints. y at x0 and y at x1 can move, freely move. And we have seen that in the last video, that general variation for this particular functional is like this x0 to x1 fy minus dy by dx of fy dash times hx dx plus fy dash del y x is equal to x0 to x1 plus f minus y dash fy dash times del x from x0 to x1 okay this was the general variation for the functional of this type okay now we would like to know what what is the general variation formula for the general variation for the functional of this type here uh, in this case if you want to find out the Euler's equation then the necessary condition is that you have to put the general variation is equal to zero right and we know that the, uh, this this thing uh, here this is the general variation and if y is an extremal with respect to all the curves where there are no constraints on the endpoints then of course y is an extremal with respect to all those curves where are where there are restrictions at the endpoints that the endpoints are fixed so it means that this thing has to be zero for sure right so if you want to obtain the Euler's equation then Euler's equation will remain same right so this thing will become zero but the arbitrary constants now will be obtained from the condition that this these things should be zero okay we will see that later okay okay so for now let us derive the uh, variation for this particular functional okay now we, we know that in case of 3d equation of a line is 3d equation of line is x minus x1 upon l1 is equal to y minus y1 upon l2 is equal to z minus z1 upon l3 this is the equation of line in three dimensions so for, i can write it as y is equal to a function of x and z is equal to a function of x so basically these two functions define a line or basically a curve in 3d so two functions defined a curve in 3d right so here we have n functions okay we have y1 y2 yn so basically this system of n functions will define a curve it can be interpreted as a curve in the space n plus 1 dimensional euclidean space okay this was 3d r3 so basically this is r n plus 1 n plus 1 Euclidean space so we can treat this thing as its extremal as its extremal will be the extremal of this functional will be something like this y1 is a function of x then y2 is a function of x okay and so on yn as a function of x this extremal we can treat it as a as a curve in rn plus 1 right okay, okay. so we would now like to obtain the variation of this functional so for that we have to use our tool what we have to do this is your j of y1 plus h1 y2 plus h2 and so on yn plus hn minus j of y1 y2 yn we have to compute this quantity and from this quantity we will obtain our variation that will be your delta j let us see how we can do that As in the last case, this is how we will define the distance, okay. This is the usual distance in the space D1 IB, okay. And these are the Euclidean distance between the point P0 and P0 star and P1 and P1 star. P0 and, and P1 are the endpoints of this curve Y and P0 star and P1 star are the endpoints of this curve Y star, right. And we will write HIX as the distance between YIX and YIX star, okay, for I is equal to 1 to N. And we let that this P0 is this point X0, Y1, Y2, Yn with not on the superscript and P1 as X1, Y1, Y2, Yn with 1 as a superscript. These are the endpoints of these curves, by the, of this curve, okay, this curve as in Rn plus 1. And this P0 star and P1 star, okay, these are the uh, endpoints of the curve Yi star, okay, right. And obviously, we uh, same as in the last video, we have y and y, r, y star defined for different intervals and we will expand both this to this bigger interval, right? So, we once more, we will extend the functions 
yi and yi star linearly onto the interval like this from x0 to x1 plus delta x1 okay this is what we have to do similarly as we have done in the last video if you don't have if if you didn't see the last video first you have to see that first okay now what will be the variation now we will compute this delta j then we will separate it into two quantities the one quantity that is linear in our uh, parameters delta x0 delta x1 hi hi dash delta yi delta yi dash that quantity and the other quantity which is of the order one more than one relative to this distance now we have n curves and we will take the sum of the distance between the uh, sorry now we have n functions we have only one curve in rn plus one but that is specified by n functions so we will take the sum of the distance of uh, distance between those functions right so this quantity will give us the required thing variation right so now what we have to compute we have to compute x naught to x naught uh, uh, x naught to x0 plus delta x naught to x1 plus delta x1 f x y1 plus h1 y2 plus h2 y n plus h n y1 dash plus h1 dash y n dash plus h n dash dx minus x naught to x1 f x y1 y2 y n y1 dash y2 dash y n dash dx okay this is what we have to compute okay so right the first thing again we have this from x naught plus delta x naught to x1 plus delta x1 right so what i am doing here my here is my x naught here is my x1 so i am writing it as th this integral uh, first integral was from here to here okay so i am writing from here to here so i have to subtract this much right so see this is x naught to x1 okay minus x naught to x naught plus delta x naught plus x1 to delta x1 okay and this is the second integral in the last equation so we will we will combine the first two so first two will be and like apply the tailors here okay and just retain the terms which are of order one and like discard all other terms we will get here you will get uh, when you will write the tailors you will have f plus y1 f y1 plus y2 f y2 plus y n f y n so i can write it as summation y i f y i so it will be when you apply the tailors you will get plus you have this sorry it's not y i it will be h i okay plus this with respect to y dash you will have h i dash f y i dash so the first term f will cancel with this f so you will have summation i from 1 to n f y i h i plus f y i dash h i dash d x and this as we have done in the last case this can be approximated as fu function evaluated at x is equal to x1 times delta x1 and this can be evaluated as function computed at x is equal to x0 times delta x0 now you integrate this by parts and use the conditions on h i's okay as we have done in the last video so we will get summation from i to i from 1 to n f y i minus d y by d x of f y i dash okay you can just integrate it by parts it will be first function f y i times integration of second function that will be h i from x naught to x one minus differentiation of first function okay differentiation of first function that will be d y by d x of f y i dash times integration of second function So th this is that term. Okay, we have this h i, right? And this is your. Uh, okay, this is this term, and this is this term. Right? And here you will have summation. Here we have we had summation, right? This is summation. This is summation. So this is f y i dash times h i at x is equal to x one, right? And this is f y i dash times h i at x is equal to x naught. Okay, right. So just you have to integrate this by parts. Right. Now you, uh, as we have seen in the last video, we have this relation between h i and del y i. And this is the relation between h i at x one and del y i one, right? So we will replace our h i's in the last equation. So you can just replace and do some manipulation. 
this is what you will get your variation will be summation i from 1 to n f y i minus d y by d x of f y i dash times h i x d x plus i from 1 to n f y i dash del y i x from x naught to x 1 and times plus this thing right you can see in the case in the last case we had something like this x naught to x 1 f y i minus d y by d x of f y i dash d x h i h x d x plus f y i dash not y i it was just f y because in that case in the last case we have this function f x y y dash d x so we have f y minus d y by d x of f y f y i times del y f y i f y dash time del, uh, del y from x naught to x one plus f minus f y dash times y dash del x from x naught to x one now you can see here these are same except we have a summation here okay these two equations are same except we have summations here right so this was what we expected right so this is the variation this is the formula for general variation Right? of the functional of the form f x y1 y2 yn y1 dash y2 dash yn dash dx now uh, suppose this functional has an extremal for some this curve, right? This this functional has an extremal for this particular curve, which is a curve in Rn plus 1, okay, joining these endpoints. Okay. So it means that this particular curve is an extremal with respect to this set. This set is set of all admissible curves joining P0 and P1. Okay, these endpoints are free. And in this particular set resides a set where all the curves are such that P0 and P1 are fixed. So basically, do you understand? This is my P0, this is my P1, okay. This can actually move freely, any, like, they can move freely and we have to find the curves like this, okay. These are my, this is the locus of P0, this is the locus of P1. But these curves, where P0 and P1 are fixed, they are involved, right, in that set. So, in the bigger set, there lies a set where P0 and P1 are fixed, right. So, now if your, this curve star is an extremal with respect to this set, then obviously this is an extremal with respect to this set, right? And we already know that if this is an extremal with respect to this set, then the Euler's equation is given by f y i minus d y by d x of f y i dash is equal to 0 for i is equal to 1 to n, right? So we obviously uh, if this is an extremal for this set with respect to this set, then obviously this is an extremal for this set and hence it will satisfy these things, right? So in our variation, the first term will vanish in the formula for variation we already have these things zero right so we will be left with that this thing is equal to this quantity is equal to zero right so when you you want to find out the extremal then you have to solve this set of n second order differential equation okay you have to solve this set and then whatever constants will be there in your solutions those constants you have to obtain using this condition. So basically these conditions which we are obtaining, these are conditions for obtaining the arbitrary constants which we will, we will obtain using these conditions. And in case of fixed uh, endpoints, we used to solve these equations and we used to compute the arbitrary constants using the uh, condition that y i at x naught is given and y i at x1 is given, right? But now that is not given, so we have to use these conditions. Okay. Thank you.